Listen to me, I would love to work with Eddie. Eddie, well, Eddie won't return my calls. So maybe one day we'll have a conversation. But Eddie, I think Eddie got to a place in his life. He's like, look, I've done it all. I've seen it all. Peace out. I want to let you know that there is a, a definitive blueprint that you can follow to achieve success, prosperity, longevity, and peace of mind. Yeah, we riding around this Tyler Perry studio. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Like, I never even seen nothing like this. So whenever we start talking about Diddy and his allegedly shady dealings with artists in the industry, another name that always comes up is Tyler Perry's. It's kind of weird, you know? And usually when something keeps popping up like that, there's gotta be some truth to it. And get this, someone's been saying that Tyler actually works under Diddy. And guess who spilled the beans? None other than Eddie Murphy himself. Sometimes those hunches turn out to be spot on, but let's just hear what Eddie has to say about it. I, racist. I ain't hooked up in all that racism shit. My motto is life is just, be happy with me. Eddie Murphy dropped a truth bomb recently that really shines a light on how Hollywood has treated black actors over the years. He basically said that the industry has purposely kept black actors apart, focusing on division instead of unity. Murphy didn't hold back, hinting at some shady stuff that's been going on behind the scenes to keep this separation going. It's a sad reality where black actors are being pitted against each other instead of standing together. Murphy even suggests that these toxic dynamics have been ingrained in the minds of up-and-coming black actors, making the divide even worse within their own community. It's a serious issue that needs to be addressed. I was born, I ain't say shit. I mean, I ain't it. Huh? What sucks? Reaganomics sucks? Or tell us something we don't know. Imagine Eddie Murphy teaming up with Jordan Peele on a project, or seeing Jamie Foxx and Denzel Washington launching their own production company. It's exciting to think about the potential of these collaborations. But what's interesting is the apparent lack of partnership between Eddie Murphy and Tyler Perry throughout their careers. Both of them are huge names in Hollywood, yet they've never really worked together. This trend isn't just about them. It's a common theme among influential black creatives today. It's like they're afraid that teaming up might somehow threaten the success they've worked so hard to achieve individually. It's a shame because imagine the magic they could create if they joined forces. But maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. I would love to work with Eddie. Eddie, well, Eddie won't return my calls. So maybe one day we'll have a conversation. But why is there so much fear? There's been talk about Eddie Murphy's prolific output. Apparently, he's been in over 50 movies in less than five years. But here's the kicker. Only a small portion of those flicks were directed by black directors. This kind of sheds light on the industry's dynamics and might explain why we have haven't seen Eddie teaming up with Tyler Perry on a project. It's like there's this hesitancy, you know? And it's not just Eddie and Tyler. The same vibe seems to be behind why we haven't seen Will Smith and Denzel Washington teaming up for a bunch of films, kind of like how Al Pacino and Robert De Niro have done. It's like there's this unwritten rule or something holding them back from coming together. And it's a shame because we're missing out on some potentially epic collaborations. Yeah, it was, it was, it was wise. <laughs> Especially that we are meeting kind of for the first time that's important. So, yeah, that does help. Well, the reason behind Tyler and Eddie Murphy not collaborating seems to have some deeper roots. Right now, there's this global awakening happening about how vulnerable Black lives are, thanks to systemic issues causing some messed up outcomes. With the Black Lives Matter movement gaining traction, more and more people are seeing the urgent need for big changes, especially in terms of economic empowerment. The president of the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce says more businesses are seeking her help. Eddie Murphy has been dropping hints about some serious unfair stuff going down in the industry. And it's got people wondering if folks like Tyler Perry might be involved. You know, it's interesting that Eddie's only Oscar nom came from his role in Dreamgirls, directed by Bill Condon. And get this, in interviews, Eddie straight up admitted that he might not have given that role the same level of effort as he does with his comedic gigs. It's like he's shining a light on how messed up things can be behind the scenes in Hollywood. One of the greatest, funniest people of all time was a George Carlin, and he received this award, award posthumously. Critics are still dissecting Eddie Murphy's iconic role in The Nutty Professor, where he completely transformed himself using makeup and prosthetics to play the entire Klump family. That kind of transformative technique isn't just a one-off either. You can see it again in the Coming to America movies, especially in that unforgettable barbershop scene. I'm just saying, I stopped liking Cash Clay 
What's changed name Muhammad Ali? During a conversation with Coming to America director Craig Brewer on the Real Blend podcast, we brought up Murphy's repeated snubs by the Academy, and Brewer shared his insights on why this pattern persists. He said, It really bothers me, and I feel that it's even more stilted against Eddie because the problem that I think people have with Eddie is that they think that it's easy for him. I'm sure there are many things in Eddie's life that feel easy, but what people don't know is what I see, which is him sitting in his chair, in makeup, he's putting on music, he's getting into a place, he's rehearsing these lines, you see him where he doesn't fool around on set. When you're in between takes, he goes to his chair and you see him get into this trance where he is working and working and working. There's craft there. And I worry that people think that like, oh, well, Eddie's just showing up and being funny, like he's always done. And that's just not true. Yes, he's showing up and being hilarious, but it's not like he's just flipping a switch. Fans believe that it's indeed an unjust evaluation of comedians, and Eddie Murphy is not the sole funny individual to be overlooked due to the Academy's reluctance to fully recognize comedic talents. One person wrote on the internet, No one ever said Hollywood had morals. The award bit is true. The 1995 movie Heat had one of the most realistic gunfights ever filmed, and it didn't even get a nomination for the Oscars. Another one added, For award shows, it's also about campaigning, and which studio will spend the most money to wow the jury, like Weinstein famously did. And you didn't talk about the pedophilia problem concerning chit actors, and maybe that is why he refused to work with Tyler. A Twitter user didn't hold back in airing her grievances about Tyler Perry's films, calling out what she saw as bias in his work. But she didn't stop at just tweeting. She went ahead and made a video, sharing it on social media where she straight up compared Tyler Perry's movies to trash. And she wasn't done there. Sounds like she had more to say. I'm not a Tyler Perry fan, so this is what I got to say. It's funny how he got all this money to do everything but the right thing. The woman went even further, claiming that Tyler Perry has a fear of white people, and she thinks it's affecting the way he makes his movies and the decisions he takes. Her bold statement got some traction, with other folks chiming in to share their own opinions about Tyler Perry and his work. Seems like she really struck a nerve with her critique. And they said they loved the script, but they wasn't sure how the film was going to turn out, so they passed. These videos imply that there might be a hidden truth beneath the surface. The question arises, what could be Tyler Perry's secret that has led some dark-skinned actors to decline working with him? Tyler Perry has definitely made a big mark, coming up from the Atlanta theater scene and hitting it big at the box office with his Medea series. But like any success story, Perry's journey has had its share of bumps and controversies. There have been whispers going around, hinting that Perry's ego might have gotten a bit out of control, to the point where he even clashed with someone as influential as Oprah. In Hollywood, it's a tough game, and sometimes you gotta play a little dirty to get ahead. And it looks like Tyler Perry might not be immune to that pressure. And when I'm hearing all this noise, man, it was crazy because there were no black people on television. Before diversity became a thing, Tyler Perry was the only one out there for a long time. Tyler Perry's transition into television with his sitcom House of Pain was a big move, but it wasn't without its controversies. When negotiations for a syndication deal and spin-off series called Meet the Browns were underway, things got messy. According According to Deadline, Perry fired four writers who were asking for union contracts, sparking outrage in the industry. Writer Terry Jackson didn't mince words saying, We were good enough to create over a hundred episodes, but now when it comes to reaping the benefits of the show being syndicated and having other spin-offs from it, he decides to let us go unless we accept a horrible offer. Perry's response to the dispute was bold. He basically said he's taking over all the writing himself, but his clashes with unions didn't stop there. In 2015, actor Union said, SAG-AFTRA and Actors' Equity took a stand, banning their members from participating in Perry's stage play, Medea on the Run, because his production company wouldn't sign union contracts. It seems like Perry's focused on making as much money as possible, but not everyone's on board with his methods. There's a camera on you, baby. There's a camera on me right Back now. behind you. Oh, hello. Praise the Lord. Um, we like to tell everybody in Dallas that we are on our way. Thank you. In the wake of the success of House of Pain and Meet the Browns, African-American journalist and cultural critic Jamila Lemieux penned an open letter to Tyler Perry, which was published by NPR. In her letter, Lemieux expressed her discomfort with Perry's use of stereotypes in his work. She wrote, Through her, the country has laughed at one of the most important members of the black community, Mother Deer, the beloved matriarch. I just can't quite get with seeing Mother Deer played by a six-foot-three 
man with prosthetic breasts flopping in the wind. Our mothers and grandmothers deserve much more than that. Heck, our fathers and grandfathers deserve more. Mr. Perry, you have told the Hollywood old guard to kiss your backside, and I appreciate that, brother. But many black folks have expressed some of the very same attitudes about your work that white critics have. Acclaimed film director Spike Lee is one of the notable figures who criticized Tyler Perry for his use of stereotypical characters in his work. Lee is well known for openly addressing this issue with Perry. Well, I still think there a lot of stuff that's on today is coonery buffoonery. And I know it's making a lot of money. Spike Lee went on to suggest that because of these stereotypical movies, individuals like Tyler Perry were breaking records. In his view, the industry could do better by avoiding such biased and nonsensical movies that feature designated one-dimensional characters. Breaking records, but we could do better. Tyler Perry's approach to casting and character portrayal has become noticeable to viewers, leading to discussions about his business strategy. Some individuals argue that Perry tends to cast dark-skinned actors in villainous roles while portraying white-skinned individuals as heroes in his movies and shows. This perception has generated discussion and debate within his audience. Beautiful black woman being abused by a no-good, dark-skinned man. During an event, Chris Rock also pointed out the recurring theme in Tyler Perry's movies, noting that there is often a limited portrayal of kind and respectful black-skinned boyfriends in Perry's films. He supported his statement by referencing Tupac Shakur, suggesting that Perry's films could offer a broader range of character representation. He said, Tupac might be a political leader if he was alive, but then again, Tupac might be in a Tyler Perry movie right now, so you don't know. He might be, Tupac might be the bad, dark-skinned boyfriend and the Tyler Perry movie. Chris Rock's point was that Tupac was a highly renowned and popular rapper during his time. However, if Tupac were given the opportunity to appear in a Tyler Perry movie, Rock believed there would be a minimal chance that Tupac would be cast as a heroic character based on Perry's typical casting patterns. He further went on saying, I would hope he's a senator, but he might be kicking Jill Scott down a flight of stairs. In Tyler Perry movies, there's always okay. Chris Rock's perspective aligned with Spike Lee's criticism, emphasizing that some prominent movies may achieve success because of Tyler Perry's perceived biased casting and storytelling choices. Both Rock and Lee raised concerns about the impact of such ideology on the film industry. Are we going back to Mantan Morlin and sleep and eat? <laughs> Yet, if those films, I mean, we're talking about Tyler Perry. Delving deeper into the entertainment industry, it's clear that colorism is a problem that's been lurking in the shadows for far too long. Hollywood in particular has come under fire in recent years, with media-driven campaigns using hashtags that quickly spread from Twitter to television news. While there have been many scandals, it's worth noting that one of the earliest prominent figures to bring negative attention to the industry was Harvey Weinstein, who was convicted of S offenses. In 2017, a wave of essay allegations surfaced Surfaced, shedding light on the darker side of Hollywood's culture. There's a new documentary that is all about the dark side of Hollywood and how some power players allegedly use their positions to prey on young, aspiring actors. And this ultimately made moguls like Diddy. So, the latest buzz online is all about an investigation into Diddy's crib, all thanks to some legal drama. Sean Diddy Combs started off 2023 on fire, killing it on stage at the MTV VMAs, dropping a killer R&B album that had Grammy buzz, and even talking of him buying up the BET network. But then, things took a nosedive real fast. Later in the year, a bunch of lawsuits hit Diddy like a ton of bricks, accusing him of serious stuff like S.A. and H. This sudden shift from his earlier successes has definitely cast a dark shadow over his career, no doubt about it. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is accused of rape. A lawsuit by R&B singer Cassie claims that she was in a years-long relationship with Combs that also involved beatings. Rumor has it that the authorities have raided some of Sean Diddy Combs' properties as part of a huge federal investigation. According to a high-ranking source in federal law enforcement, Combs is right in the thick of it, with the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York leading the charge. And who's at the forefront? The Department of Homeland Security Investigation's Transnational Organized Crime Division. So, so what's the scoop? Apparently, it's all about HT crimes. But again, this could possibly be linked to a 
trafficking investigation involving rapper Sean Combs, the music executive. This investigation is happening right after some heavy-duty allegations were thrown at Combs in multiple civil lawsuits filed in New York. These suits, including one that landed in federal court just last December, hit Combs with some serious accusations of S.A. and even S.T. But here's the kicker. Combs has been sticking to his guns, vehemently denying these claims every single step of the way. Combs' attorney calls a lawsuit absolutely baseless and vehemently denies the allegations against his client. But his past is leading the people to somewhere else. Ex-boyfriends airing their feelings on social media can be cringeworthy, but Diddy seems to have taken it up a notch. Reports are buzzing that Jennifer Lopez, his ex-girlfriend, has also spoken out about Diddy, hinting that she might be addressing T allegations in the context of their past relationship. And as if that wasn't enough drama, just a day after pop singer Cassie filed a hefty lawsuit against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, her ex of 11 years, alleging continuous physical and emotional A as well as R, both sides have now announced a settlement. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, said in a statement. Combs issued his own statement, saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. His lawyer, Ben Braffman, added in a separate statement that a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. But will it hide Diddy's past? Back in the 90s, Jennifer Lopez was romantically linked with Combs. While Lopez hasn't accused Combs of anything, in 1999, the two were arrested together on a weapons charge after a shooting incident at a nightclub in Manhattan. Lopez Lopez was initially charged with firearm possession, but the charge was dropped within the hour. Now there's a lawsuit alleging that at times, Combs asked Cassie to carry a gun in her purse. I'd rather lose a lover than to love a loser. So I'd rather lose like the love of my life than to love a guy that's just whack. And right. I think um, the experience. But it is suspicious enough for people to speculate. Diddy's rumored infidelities were a major issue for Jennifer. As a prominent music mogul in the 90s, Diddy was known for his charisma, relentless work ethic, and vibrant social life. He was a regular at nightclubs, mingling with fellow artists and fans, often partying until the early hours of the morning. His reckless behavior fueled Jennifer's suspicions about his fidelity. In a 2003 interview with Vibe magazine, she admitted, I never caught him, but I just knew. Jennifer even described how she would search hotel rooms in a desperate attempt to find him. The strain on their relationship became increasingly evident. Then, in December 1999, things took a dramatic turn when Diddy and Jennifer were caught up in serious trouble outside a nightclub in Manhattan. They were both arrested on charges related to a gun and stolen items. However, Jennifer was released quickly as the authorities believed she had no involvement in the incident. Diddy, however, faced a trial for bribery and gun charges. Fortunately for him, he was eventually found not guilty on all counts. It's hard. It requires so much trust. Back in the late 90s, Jennifer Lopez and Diddy were the ultimate power couple, both at the top of their game. Even though Diddy was seeing model Kim Porter back then, he claimed it was love at first sight when he met Jennifer. You could see their affection for each other whenever they hit the red carpet or did interviews. They just couldn't help showing off their connection. But then, one night, things took a really bad turn. According to the New York Daily News, Jennifer and Diddy were supposed to go to a party at a club in NYC. They arrived separately and skipped the security checks. Once inside, they headed straight for the VIP section to keep away from the huge crowd. But things went south real quick when Diddy got into a heated argument with someone at the bar and you could hear him shouting. Reports later said the guy was teasing Diddy about his money, and Diddy responded by throwing cash around. Security tried to break it up, but it got worse, and shots were fired. Three people got hurt, one woman got hit in the face, and two others got shot in the shoulders. An eyewitness even said both Diddy and one of his crew were firing shots. Time it was not going well, you know what I mean? That was who I was, that's how I was raised. Diddy wasted no time getting out of there once the shots rang out, and Jennifer went right along with him, holding onto her hands as they left the club. But their getaway didn't last long. The cops caught up to them, stopping their Mercedes. And wouldn't you know it, they found a 9 membered handgun stashed near Jennifer's feet in the car. Next thing you know, both of them were in cuffs, facing charges for having the gun. Jennifer had to endure a brutal 14 hours stuck to a bench at the police station. 
One cop who saw her said, she was crying all over the place. She was just upset about the whole thing. Eventually though, they let her go because there wasn't enough evidence against her. But rumor has it, she had to put up bail in exchange for spilling the beans about what happened. But she did not sit silently. She said in a show, the Puffy era was just kind of a crazy, heightened time in my life. He had been in the music business and had all this success. I was just starting and making my first album when I met him. We had this kind of crazy, tumultuous relationship that ended in a bang. This statement was enough for people to think that he might have done something very A and strong to her, that is why she decided decided to leave him. Adding to the challenges in their relationship, Jennifer Lopez suspected that Diddy was unfaithful. In a 2003 interview with Vibe, she revealed, I never caught him, but I just knew. He'd say he was going to a club for a couple of hours and then never come back that night. Lopez shared that her relationship with Diddy marked the first time she experienced infidelity. When asked about rumors of her searching for him from hotel room to hotel room, she responded, I can't remember right now, but I won't say it didn't happen. The saga of infidelity rumors continued in Jennifer Lopez's relationships. In 2016, a source told People that Lopez ended things with Casper Smart because he cheated on her and he got caught. Mark Anthony, following his split from Lopez in 2011, refuted allegations of infidelity, stating to ABC News that the stories were absolutely not true. Once I got to know him and, you know, we became friends first, and then, um, we, we developed this bond. We both understood where we were at that time. And his wild parties in numerous clubs have always been the part of top headlines, and those parties have all kinds of tea tales. People also suggest that Diddy might be on the edge of HTJ Low, but that incident happened. Before and after his relationship with Jennifer Lopez, Diddy was romantically involved with the late Kim Porter. They started dating back in the 90s and welcomed their first child, Christian, on April 1, 1998. Despite breaking up about a year later and facing some custody battles in court, they remained close and had an on-again, off-again relationship for a while. However, things hit a rough patch between Diddy and Porter when she discovered he was expecting a baby with his friend Sarah Chapman in 2006. This bombshell came while Porter was pregnant with their twins, Delilah Starr and Jesse James, born in December that same year. Feeling betrayed, Porter called it quits for good in July 2007. Of what she experienced, and it's like, it was the same thing Kim was going through. The accusations against Diddy seem never-ending, and now there are reports suggesting he might be linked to his late wife, Kim Porter's death. The narrative surrounding Kim Porter's passing has taken a dark turn, with her best friend, Kimora Lee Simmons, calling for the investigation into her unsolved death to be reopened. Kimora is determined not to carry on with life as usual when the truth might be buried. Her statements imply that she may have some insider knowledge about what really happened to Kim. We knows too, physically. But Kim got tired of him and she wasn't taking him. If he put his hands on her, she was going at him. Kimora Lee's reaction to the news of Kim's passing speaks volumes. Rushing to Kim's house and seeing her lifeless body left her devastated. Kimora couldn't make sense of it all, especially since there were no signs of Kim being sick. However, recent revelations have cast doubt on the initial explanation of Kim's death due to pneumonia. The suspicious death of the deputy coroner who was handling the investigation adds another layer to the mystery. This is the same coroner who reportedly found traces of a potentially harmful poison while investigating the circumstances surrounding Kim Porter's death. The timing of his passing just weeks ago has raised eyebrows and fueled speculation about the case. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body. The coroner at the time stated that the circumstances surrounding Kim's death required further investigation, but he was later replaced by another coroner, and it took that new coroner a huge amount of time to determine that the cause of Kim's death was pneumonia. This is where the story got shady, because the new coroner never spoke about the toxins found in Kim's body. Was he hired by someone? And according to some reports in the last days, Kim and Diddy were not on good terms. Moreover, in the wake of the hash Me Too movement controversy, numerous scandals rocked Hollywood. These scandals included comedian Kevin Hart stepping down as the Oscars host in 2019 due to the resurfacing of past homophobic tweets. Additionally, the hash Oscars So White campaign demanded increased diversity in the Oscars and greater recognition for people of color and marginalized communities. So, Hollywood's reputation has been significantly tarnished, with the once illustrious Walk of Fame appearing more like an uninspiring walk of shame without stars. Kevin Hart has stepped down 
from hosting this year's Oscars. He put out a statement on Twitter tonight saying, I have made the choice to step down. And now it is in the form of movies and shows in which Tyler Perry is one of the major examples. And this is not hidden now as we have seen in his movies that black skinned actors are always villains in his movies. And Eddie has always talked against this discrimination. People have suggested that the reason behind Eddie's blackballing is that he may have rejected work like others have been doing. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.